Hi, my name is Stephanie Wong, and today we're going to explore how BigQuery, Google Cloud's fully managed enterprise data warehouse, enables you to run analytics at scale using standard SQL with zero operational overhead. It provides unique functionality like real-time stream ingestion, query federation, GIS functions, and built-in machine learning capabilities. And to bring this to life, let's look at how NewKicks, a fictional brick and mortar and online retailer, uses advanced analytics in BigQuery to optimize their supply chain. The challenge started when the director of marketing wanted to make better ad targeting decisions. The task was given to the lead data scientist and data engineer, and they recognized four challenges to overcome. First up was to break down the various data silos within their organization. The data engineer at NewCakes built out a one-to-end mapping of key data sources, including Google Analytics, raw clickstream, online transactional, and in-store inventory data that all move data into BigQuery. Store operations data is stored in the transactional database, Cloud SQL. These data sources were ingested via a combination of BigQuery data transfer service and Cloud Dataflow in batch and streaming mode. Let's take a look at this in action. This is the Cloud Dataflow console showing NewKicks real-time ETL for in-store transactions, stock levels, and clickstream data. This job ran tandem with batch and data transfer jobs to hydrate various data sets in the data warehouse. The clickstream step was processing around 200 events per second with BigQuery as the target output. This data was immediately available for querying. For example, this query shows the most recent clickstream events. Note the latest event is about two seconds behind current UTC time. With real-time access to multiple data sets, they could perform more meaningful analysis. Like this query joining online sales with in-store sales data, calculating ranks for the top 10 sneakers. Accessibility across various warehouses makes the data more actionable. However, after reviewing current schemas in the data warehouse, the data scientist and data engineer realized they needed to perform some additional and possibly heavy transformation and enrichment in order to get the right data sets in place and they were going to need some additional processing resources to get the job done. Now to drive key data warehouse workloads like ingestion, ETL, and business intelligence, NewKicks used a combination of BigQuery pricing models, on-demand and flat rate to optimize resources and cost. For lower query volume workloads like query prototyping and exploratory analysis, the IT manager utilized on-demand pricing with project level cost controls. However, the forecasting project presented new challenges like unknown query volume with the need to minimize disruption to existing production workloads. In addition, resources were only needed for a few days. This is where the power and value of flex slots came into play. Flex slots let you purchase BigQuery capacity for short durations, as little as 60 seconds at a time. Using the BigQuery UI or the client libraries, the IT manager was able to immediately allocate 500 flex slots to a new project that the data scientist and data engineer could work in. The serverless nature of BigQuery enables deploying this additional capacity in a few seconds and can be shut down after 60 seconds, so it's an excellent solution for short-term and bursty workloads. With their additional and isolated capacity in place, the team started to make quick work on transformation and enrichment. To drive the forecasting model, the team needed to produce a filtered and enriched clickstream that had several key attributes, including customer location, specific target action, and store location. This required a series of transformations, including filtering, joining, and applying GIS functions, all of which can be accomplished at scale in BigQuery. To perform these transformations, NewKicks data scientists executed a series of query jobs inside of AI platform notebooks, which streamlined integration with BigQuery. The goal here was to produce a filtered clickstream that was joined to customer and in-store pickup data. The first query job filtered out clicks that meet a specific requirement, including active sessions that ended with a purchase and an in-store pickup. This query reduces the analysis set from 10 terabytes to one terabyte. Notice that the results were saved back as a new destination table. Next, the customer table was enriched with geo coordinates, which were joined back to the clickstream. She then joined clickstream to orders. To obtain the geo information for a store, she used an external query function to execute a query into the store operations database located on Cloud SQL. This type of query federation reduces data copying with geo information for customers and stores, she applied one final transformation and filter. Using built-in GIS functions, she could calculate the distance between customer residence and store location. Built-in GIS functions enable you to project analysis in line without having to export your data. This query produces candidate feature inputs for the model. If she wants to audit this process, she can walk back through the tables created. Over time, these queries could become materialized views and or stream or batch transforms, setting the foundation for a feature store. 
With the transform data in place, they were able to move on to modeling, so they turned to BigQuery ML. If you have experience with machine learning, you know that traditional workflows require additional pre-processing, data splitting, model development, and deployment steps. But with BigQuery ML, steps like pre-processing, model development, and deployment are removed. It lets you build machine learning models using standard SQL and without the need to move your data for external training and evaluation. First, NewKicks data scientist did a quick sample of the transform clickstream data. For this model, she wanted to look at top line all products per day clickstream volume, so they needed to apply a quick transformation to group all of the clicks by day. No problem. With BigQuery ML, the data scientist can create various model types, including regression, clustering, and XGBoost. In this case, she used ARIMA, which is built to forecast future time series based values. Here, she told the model what data target to forecast and time series columns to use, and provided a hint regarding US based holidays. Finally, she passed in the query of clickstreams that looks back two years but prunes out the last 30 days. This model trains on two years of data and then saves into the dataset for evaluation and serving. She then used the ML forecast option to forecast the next 30 days in the time series at a 90% confidence interval. To verify the model estimates, she selected the actuals from the 30-day window. From there, she could plot the historical plus forecast plus actual and the lower and upper bound of the confidence intervals. This graph passes a quick eye test. You can see seasonality changes over quarter and then surges during the weekends. Once we get into the forecast, you can see that the model is within three of the four week windows and barely misses week one, even though it saw an upward trend. With an end-to-end -end workflow in place, the data scientist can go back and do additional EDA for outliers and errors, and then persist these results back to the warehouse and or share the model for serving. With a top-line model in place, new kicks could move on to additional models like per-store and per-product-based forecasting. Problem solved. In this demo, we showed you how NewKicks efficiently extended a BigQuery data warehouse to create a demand forecasting model by utilizing various transformation patterns, flex slots, federated queries, GIS, and machine learning functions. Check out these links to learn more and get started with building your cloud-native data warehouse on Google Cloud.